to the Super Chuck Show. All right, I got someone here to say hello to me. <laughs> In Singapore, we love eating this fruit called the durian and there is a species of it called the D24. Why am I mentioning this? Well, let's show us DZ Force name does really look like D24. If you're new to the channel and find this content interesting, do me a favour and click the like and subscribe button down below. And if you're already subscribed, you are a lovely person. Today we have the Let's Show DZ4 in the studio. To me, this is quite interesting as it features a passive radiator as well as a triple dynamic driver design. Kicking things off with an unboxing, the front of the box has this motif of four circles that are connected. This also appears on the faceplate of the DZ4 as well. And I think it's supposed to represent the triple dynamic driver and passive radiator in its design. The thought process behind this product is actually really interesting. Of course, you also need to have that all-important high-res audio logo at the bottom of the box that does not really mean anything. Flipping it to the back, you are greeted with lots of specifications but no exploded view or graph or any of that sort of thing. Removing the sleeve and the top half of the box, you get all the important literature that no one needs. Tossing them aside reveals the earphones themselves doing a Han Solo in foam. Lashua has provided a screw down case here that I must say it's actually pretty nice. There is this soft touch silicone rubbery finish on it. Yeah, of course it's not as premium as a nice metal one but what do you expect when you're paying less than $100 for these? I might do a sit test on the case, seems pretty safe. Okay, so I'm going to conduct the very scientific sit test and the subject is placed on the chair already. I'm getting my ass ready for this. Okay, so I'm ready for the sit test. I'm going to sit on the case right now. Um, feels not too bad. Feels like, feels like it's still in one piece, so it's not too bad. Overall, quite a sturdy case. I'm quite heavy, so it has done well. You get quite lovely cable with it. It's actually teamed to match the DZ4 really well with its silvery brown light aesthetic. You are also provided with two types of ear tips. Again, I'm happy to say that these are not the venereal disease sort of ear tips that you just want to throw them away when you receive them. The ear tips here have two different ball sizes, so you can mess around with them. One of it is a regular size ball, while the other has a wider ball. Next, let's talk about build quality. The DZ4 has quite an interesting colour. It is well beige and this isn't that common. The chassis of the DZ4 is 3D printed by Hey Gears, whom have previously built chassis for the likes of Truvias with their Hexa, as well as Moondrop with the Variations and Blessing. From my experience, the print and post processing of Hey Gears is really clean. The chassis of the DZ4 has its nice matte texture on it as well, rather than it being glossy. The faceplate has this champagne colour with the DZ4 motive on it, let's show us it that it is semi-open. It has a two-pin termination on it as well. The chassis is really lightweight and very comfortable. But here's the thing, because it's so lightweight, I'm not super comfortable sitting on it but it does feel quite sturdy in the realm of plastics. Inside the chassis is where things get exciting. There are three titanium dome dynamic drivers inside it that is connected via a flexible printed circuit which houses the crossover as well. The DZ4 also employs a passive radiator. This actually confused me for a bit as a passive radiator would usually require a closed design for maximum efficiency, but the DZ4 is semi-open. I think that this is a deliberate choice from Letshow as a method to tune the effectiveness of the passive radiator. Perhaps when it's fully closed, it's a bit too strong, so they made it semi-open to weaken its effect a little bit. Moving on, you get the 4-core 216 strand silver plated copper cable. I like the aesthetics on these as Letshow really did a great job matching the looks of the cable with the eye. It's really cohesive. The cable here is a 2-pin to 3.5mm termination. The cable is decently microphonic free and it does come with a choker as well. Although the choker can be a little stiff to operate. Comfort, the DZ4 is shaped like yet another custom universal IEM. It fits well in my ears with no hot spots. What I like about it is that these are super light. They don't feel like much in my ears and I'm actually really thankful that uh, it is semi-open. Because of that, it gives you this pressure equalization feeling so there is no stuffiness in the ear feeling. The cable also handles well and does not become a bird's nest every time I handle it. Sound. I actually used the Lotto Pogo Touch Titanium with the DZ4 and left them running in, in my rig for about 3 days prior to this review. The difference was quite noticeable for me. Before running them in, they sound a little bit more constricted and after running them in, it's a bit more relaxed sounding. 
The overall sound signature of the DZ4 is also pretty interesting. It does have a natural warm sound with a slightly thicker than natural tonal weight. The mid-range has this particular airiness to the tone that is absolutely enchanting to me. There is this breathiness and resonance that make them quite unique in the price category. Travel extension is decent and polite and should suit folks who are a little bit more travel sensitive. The DZ4 on the whole is quite a balanced pair and one that can suit plenty of genres. Bass. I think that the bass on the DZ4 is very well balanced. They strike a very nice equilibrium with the mid-range and treble. These are not a bass hate pair despite the triple dynamic driver design. Sub-bass extension on the DZ4 is actually pretty favourable. Lower frequency rumbles are quite evident and supports the overall music quite well when it makes its appearance. Mid-bass on the DZ4 is pretty punchy and fast. It does have a good punchy response. I won't call them thick sounding, but the way it renders bass, it's likened to that of very quick, fast jabs. Dynamics are decent on the DZ4. Bass lamps are tight and fast, perhaps not the largest in terms of quantity. I do wish for slightly more definition when it comes to bass with a bit more itch. When I am listening to some tracks with intricate bass guitar runs, I just wish for them to have a little bit more definition, but really, I'm just nitpicking. Mid-range, truly the highlight on the DZ4. I adore the mid-range design here. Vocals have a very nice resonant rest and it's airy breathy to listen to. It sounds very natural with lovely decay. Mid-range on the DZ4 just sits a notch warm from natural, which really gives it a very delicious tonal color. Vocals on the DZ4 is actually also pretty magical with the airiness and resonance adding to voice. There is just this magical halation of air that makes it Pretty enjoyable. Both male and female vocals does sound quite effortless and not strained. Clarity is also pretty commendable. Instruments that occupy the mid-range remain to have pretty good definition as well. Also, guitars are a delight to listen on DZ4. I really enjoyed the riffs on this song called Adventure by You Are So Be. When it comes to resolution, I think that it's pretty much on par with other offerings from other brands in the same price category. Treble. Treble extension is decent. There is air on the DZ4 with decent extension. What I like about treble response is that it maintains a very likeable character without much harshness and this is very easy to like. It lends quite a bit of harmonics to the mid-range for it to have this beautiful halation character of vocals, which to me is the highlight of the DZ4. Symbols and crashes and things that can cause music to sound rough are handled in a way where there is good detail for it to be interesting without the jarringness. This is honestly pretty well done. Next, soundstage. When it comes to width and height, on both fronts, the DZ4 is good for the price. It is comparable to a smaller concert venue. Next, depth and positioning. Depth is average as I do find that the dynamics on offer on the DZ4 is average. Not enough to create the really deep depth Positioning, on the other hand, is pretty good from the clean and clear mid-range and treble response. And next, we're going to talk about some comparisons. So firstly, versus the SimGod EM6L. So an IM in a similar price range would be the recently released SimGod EM6L. The EM6L is a hybrid that has four balance numbers and one dynamic driver. In terms of signature, it is also quite a departure from the DZ4, where the EM6L is a warmer sounding pair. And in the current market climate, it is a little rarer in comparison. I do feel that the DZ4 has a faster transient response compared to the EM6L. The DZ4 is also a little bit more airy by comparison as well. The EM6L has a very syrupy tonal color with vocals sounding lusher and thicker than the DZ4. I also found that the EM6L to be a bit more dynamic than the DZ4 as well. But between the two, they are actually very different sounding IEMs. And if you are starting out, these two will give you a very different flavor. Next versus the 7Hz Sonus. The 7Hz Sonus has a bit more upper mid-range energy compared to the DZ4. The Sonus sounds more focused and concentrated by comparison. The DZ4 on the other hand has this very airy halation in the mid-range that is really enchanting. I do feel that the Sonus is a little bit more engaging to listen to, while the DZ4 is a more relaxed sounding IEM. The Sonus is a little bit more upfront with details, while the DZ4 presents them in a way where it is still present but not as direct. And finally, in conclusion, really to me, the DZ4 is a natural warm IEM with beautiful mid-range that has a glow to the sound. And that is something that I really enjoy. It is slightly laid back which makes them perfect for long hours of listening as well. I would really use this on a day where I don't really want to listen too deeply into the music and have an IM that renders music in a way where it does not demand my attention 100% of the time. 
And with that said, I hope you like the content so far. If you like what I do, please kindly support me by pressing the like and subscribe button down below. It'll help me out a bunch and it'll like spur me on to do more videos. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Super Chunk Super Audio Show. Um, yeah, I hope to see you guys very soon.